Mike Fink, the NASA commander of Expedition 18, left Earth for the International Space Station on October the 12th from the same launch pad at Kazakhstan, Russia, where in 1957 Yuri Gagarin took off. After six months, he returned back to Earth on April the 8th, 2009. During his stay at the ISS, he conducted the space talk program and interacted with students of the Northeast India from Dibruga, Shillong, Gohati and Imphal, which was organized by Friends of Assam and Seven Sisters, FAS. Hello friends. After the successful program of the space talk, I have with me today Mike Fink, the commander of the Expedition 18, who went to the International Space Station. So here is Mike. Hello, Mike. Dr. Ahmed, so nice to see you. So nice to see you here on planet Earth. Thank you so <laughs> much. And it's so nice to see you after your six months in space. Mm -hmm. Very hard work. Thank you. You have taken your very valuable time, both in space and now here on Earth, for FAS and for all the students and the community there in Northeast mm -hmm. India. They would definitely would like to hear from you now. Well, thank you very much. And. Uh, I just remember just uh, a little while ago I was floating in space uh, aboard the International Space Station and I got to see a beautiful planet Earth and some of my most vivid memories were to see the beauty of, of Northeast India and some of my most other beautiful memories were getting a chance to talk to students across the Northeast. So I'd like to uh, talk to everybody today as a follow-on to uh, some of the words we had uh, when, when, when we were flying in space. space. And uh, so, uh, so without further ado, uh, I'd like to make a few remarks and say hello to everybody, as well as to uh, present in just a little while a video, a tour, a personal tour, VIP tour, hey, of the International Space Station. Hello, I'm Mike Fink, commander of Expedition 18. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. During our expedition, we've uh, built the space station a bit bigger and we're ready for six-person crew. So I'm really proud to show off today. We're going to try to give you the seven-minute, a quick tour of the International Space Station. And right now we're in the No. 2 module, which is uh, called Harmony. It's the Harmony module. And behind us, you can see the flags representing the 15 nations that are working together to build the largest space structure ever. Yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen, this is the largest space station ever built and it got larger while we're uh, well during expedition 18 and I'm really proud of that so let's uh, let's take a look I'm gonna swing around that's the front of the space station you just saw I'm gonna swing it back and uh, look to the aft part the back part of the space station but if you look off to my right the starboard side of the space station you'll see the Columbus module built with pride by the uh, engineers and technicians from the European Space Agency, which in and of itself is a consortium of uh, spacefaring nations. And uh, this is their contribution, and it's a great place to do science. Uh, we did a lot of science aboard the space station uh, in the Columbus module. And if we turn around, because we can, we'll do upside down and fly back this way, we're gonna come to the Kibo module, which is the pride of Japan. You can see the, the flag of the land of the rising sun behind us. There's two uh, big window portals there. And uh, we can also see that a, this is a huge laboratory. Uh, we're just starting to really use it uh, for, uh, to its potential. We have the Cybo rack here, which is uh, uh, cell biology. Then we have a fluid physics rack. The Japanese side has their own robot arm and an airlock that they can put, uh, we, we can put uh, experiments outside and bring them back in with the Japanese robot arm, the GEM RMS. It's the largest module we have aboard Space Station and uh, we're very proud to have it on board with us and it was a pleasure working inside. This is Node 2 again and uh, this is where we have all of our, uh, uh, it, it kind of connects other, other modules like the, the Columbus and the, and the Kibo module, but also it uh, has uh, places to, to help keep us uh, living. And this is a, a sleep uh, station that I have. This is where I sleep at night. We have another one in here. 
And uh, this is a, a, a nice quiet place and uh, this is also where we do a lot of our work during the day, a lot of our administrative work because yeah, paperwork f finds us up here in space. We're moving into the American Destiny module, the laboratory, the US lab, and uh, it's a great place to do science. We've been doing science here for a couple years. The other modules you saw are brand new. Uh, here in the lab, we also have another sleep station. So this is the third place for people to sleep. That's where Dr. Barrett is currently sleeping. And we have a toilet. This is something new that came up uh, during our mission. So you can see the space station now has two toilets. And uh, we also have uh, a water processing facility up here. That's new, it recycles water. Um, and not just water, but urine, which we think of as processed water on board. Uh, so we are actually very, uh, very good with our water on board. And the technology that we have for recycling water and processing water is not just useful for uh, uh, water conservation and up mass, you know, uh, cargo, less water cargo that we need when we're up on the moon and Mars and beyond, but also it's good for planet Earth. You can think of all the places uh, out there, the uh, desert communities and such, that could learn from our technology here of uh, recycling water. So we have the water recycling racks right here, down here, and above us we have a new addition uh, it, that's uh, as a refrigerator and it also has a water uh, distribution uh, station. So the potable water uh, dispenser, the PWD, and uh, we haven't started using it yet, but pretty soon we will. And uh, the PWD is we can actually drink that processed water. So in some respects, yeah, we're drinking our own urine, but on the other hand, it's just pure water as pure as you can get. And uh, right next to this uh, robotics workstation, uh, Canada is on the outside of the space station has contributed to Canada Arm 2 and this big huge robotic arm has helped us build the space station and during our mission we were able to put the last part of our huge truss and uh, put another solar array outside uh, thanks to our STS-119 shuttle crew friends. So it was great to have them on board. And uh, you can see Dr. Barrett here, he's uh, getting some work done. He just got here a few days ago and he has a lot to do. Say hi, Mike. Hi, Mike. There we go. He's, he's trainable. This is a great place, by the way. Best he's... destination in low Earth orbit. Yes, indeed. In fact, it's the only destination in low Earth orbit right now. <laughs> and uh, But we're working to go beyond low Earth orbit. And with all the technologies that we're learning and uh, the practice we have for not just living but thriving in space is pretty important. So all of our us expedition crews are very very happy to contribute. So uh, we're moving along in our quick tour. Uh, we're now in Node 1 module, which is also called Unity. It's uh, one of our oldest modules. It came up in 1998 and it's still doing great. Uh, behind us is the Quest airlock. Uh, it's used for going outside in space to help finish building the space station, do some repairs. And uh, during uh, the STS-126 mission, which brought up a lot of this equipment, you know, Chris Ferguson and his team, uh, they uh, They've gone outside. We've gone outside many times to uh, get the space station bigger, connect electrical electrical uh, connectors, and fix our solar or alpha rotary joint. And uh, it's a it's a great place to uh, to uh, go outside and uh, work in this uh, the Quest airlock. But here in the Unity module, we have a huge piece of equipment here: the Advanced Resistive Exercise Device, ARED. And uh, myself and Dr. Sandy Magnus uh, assembled this from all the parts that came up uh, with, uh, with the STS-126 crew. And now we can do a lot of exercise in space. Before we were able to do some exercise, this, is, uh, this really helps us out a lot. And uh, we're, we like to think of ourselves as A-Red Strong. I'm going to flip around here and continue going to the aft part of the space station. We started the forward part, I'm going backwards. And this is a, the pressurized mating adapter number one. It doesn't have a name. And uh, it goes from the American side, or the, or the USOS as we call it, which is American, European, and Japanese side, to the Russian side. And you can see in the functional cargo block here, it's a lot of cargo. This cargo uh, is uh, storage for food and uh, spare parts. And you can see this is a spare uh, uh, electron unit which converts uh, water, uh, water into uh, oxygen and hydrogen. And right in here, you can see the docking compartment. And uh, during this mission, uh, Expedition 18, uh, Colonel Yuri Lonchikov and myself uh, performed two spacewalks. We'll take a quick look. 
into the docking compartment. You can see we have some extra spacesuits there. And uh, finally, we get to the heart of the space station, the service module. And we can see a couple more of my colleagues up here. They're getting their work done. You can see uh, Dr. Shimoni right here. He's, uh, he's getting some work done on the computer. And you can see uh, Colonel uh, Yuri Lanchikov uh, exercising. So this is kind of uh, the heart of the space station. It's one of the oldest modules. It has the capability to create oxygen, uh, we saw from the electron there. And it also takes carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and cleans the atmosphere. Uh, we also have those capabilities on the, on the American lab. And together we have a great redundancy and can live and thrive here aboard the space station. So this was a quick and dirty tour. Hope you enjoyed it. Cheers. Well, thanks for watching the tour part of our video. We showed you around the beautiful International Space Station. But now I'd like to show you a few images of daily life aboard the space station. And many of you have a lot of questions. For example, here's a clip of how we eat. Now this is a recipe that Sammy first invented uh, right before the Super Bowl when the Steelers won. So it's got to be good luck and quite good. So inside we have some barbecue sauce, some beef, onions, some baked beans. Garlic. And garlic, thank you. And you can see we are in space. What a great place to spend our birthday. That's really good. And then you can see I've been up aboard the space station so long, my hair keeps growing just like it does on the earth, but we don't have any barbers or, or beauticians or somebody to help us out, so we have to cut our own hair. And of course, you wonder how we sleep. We actually sleep standing up. Here's my sleep station where I, where I sleep every night. Yeah, it's pretty neat sleeping standing up, isn't it? Aboard the space station, we've uh, done a lot of science experiments. In fact, we've done 200% of the science we were originally set out to do because we have such great support on the ground. One of our favorite uh, experiments was called SPICE. And uh, basically what it does is it makes flames in space. And fire and flames work behave differently up here in space than they do on the ground and a lot of it has to do with convection. Convection is where hot air rises and cold air sinks or hot water or cold water. But because we don't really have gravity up here because we're in microgravity environment, hot air doesn't rise, cold air doesn't sink. So we don't get really flame shapes unless we uh, try hard to make them. So by investigating flames and fire in space, we're actually going to understand how to build better rocket engines up here in space and better engines on the ground uh, for our cars and our airplanes. It will save us some gas. For 94 point that you told us to. And that's how it's done. Also, we had a chance to step outside of our spacecraft here, performing a spacewalk. And uh, you can see here's me and Yuri on the outside of the space station. Looks a lot of fun. Hey, uh, also, uh, just to let you know, the, what you're seeing is Yuri and I are in the Russian spacesuit called Orlon. We also have American spacesuits uh, called EMUs, Extravehicular Mobility Units. And uh, they're very similar, and yet they're very different. But the neat thing about all of our spacesuits is that they're their own little spaceships. They have all the, all the different systems that you need for a spaceship. So it provides us oxygen, takes out uh, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, has a communication system. It's pretty neat. Well, that's it. Uh, this is the end of our video. Just wanted to say thanks for flying with us aboard the International Space Station. Really glad that you could join us. And uh, just to let you know, all the people you s you've seen in these videos, uh, we, 
We were kids once too. And so for all you kids out there, uh, your dreams can come true. You got to work hard. You got to be good. And you got to study a lot and uh, listen to your, your elders, your parents. But you know what? You're, you'll get there and you'll have so much fun. Um, you might not always get there in the path you think. My path uh, took a few deviations before I re realized my dream to become an astronaut. As you can see, I'm having a lot of fun up here. So this is the International Space Station saying thank you very much, goodbye, and good luck. Thank you very much, Mike. Thank you very much for what you have done for us and for all the people there in the Northeast. And you know, I'd really like to say thank you to FAS, uh, Friends of Assam and Seven Sisters, for making the Space Talk program possible. Uh, without their volunteerism, without their community service, we wouldn't have had a chance to uh, board the space station to have a chance to talk to so many students across the northeast of India. So uh, on behalf of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, that's NASA, uh, and myself and my crew, Expedition 18, aboard the space station, we'd like to say thank you very much. Thank you for, for letting us have the opportunity to speak, speak with you all. Next time, I hope that you are there amongst all of them and address them there in the north itself. Ah, ahibo, ahibo. Friends, let me take this opportunity to introduce to you Mr. Rajan Barua, the chairman of FAS in Houston here. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you, Dr. Fred Ahmed. Thank you for... First, uh, I want to congratulate all of you in the Northeast India. I want to uh, really thank Mike for doing it for us. And then lastly, I want to thank uh, Dr. Sayed Ahmed for not only coordinating our space talk, but now you are coming all the way to NASA in Houston, Texas, and you are interviewing with Mike and us. It is a great uh, inspiration. It's a great message that you are doing, and hopefully we'll continue with our war. Thank you very much, Rajan. So I want to say goodbye from NASA here in Houston. Bye-bye. Okay, During my childhood, I dreamt of man walking in space. Today it is a reality. You have done it. Your space talk has motivated many young ones here. Hope that someday, someone from Assam may follow you to become an astronaut out there in space, in the ISS. Thank you, Mike.